Greetings from Ann Arbor, Michigan, a great state and a great place of the great USA. Welcome to our podcast series, and I am promising you that this series is going to be very enlightening, very inspirational, a lot of fun, and something that will really, I think, help you as you walk your path to holiness. This series is going to have a lot of different things that you probably have questions about, but maybe have the opportunity to ask, especially about religion just life. Like, what do they do all day? Who are they? Where do they come from? What's it like when a young woman enters religious life? So stay tuned as we will discuss where sisters come from today. Welcome back to our podcast series, The Truth Shall Set You Free. And this is part of the Go LE digital platform that our sisters have now. And we come to you from our studio in Ann Arbor, Michigan, our community, Dominican Sisters of Mary Mother of the Eucharist. And I know many of you have already watched many of these podcasts. And so you already know how these things work and you are just hooked on them already. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. And today you're going to be hooked on another one because it's a great blessing to have with me today, Sister Martin Therese Pellin. Sister, welcome. Thank you, sister. It's and good to be sister, here. Um, your story is so multifaceted in so many ways. But let me just begin um, by saying, tell me a little bit about your family and your upbringing. So I was born and raised in Canada and um, Ontario, Northern Ontario. I was born, raised mostly in southwestern Ontario. I have a brother and a sister, both older. I'm the baby of the family. Um, <laughs> that explains a lot. It does, doesn't it? Um, a good Catholic family, went to Mass every Sunday, you know, prayed the rosary at night up until about third grade, and that kind of went by the wayside. But um, very faithful in, you know, the Catholic faith. Tell me about your education. Did you? I went go? to school. Yes, I, I did get an education. <laughs> That's good to know. I, um, I went to Franciscan University of Steubenville, which is where well, I actually. Well, first of all, where did you go to grade school? Oh, my gosh. Well, I lived in Saudi Arabia for three years. That's what I want you to talk about. Okay. <laughs> well, I went to Saudi Arabia for three years. Um, and, and I went to an American... your father's work? Yes. He worked for Bell Canada, and they had a contract with Saudi Telecom. And so we lived in a Canadian compound there. Um, mostly, it was mostly French Canadians that lived in the... So that's where I developed a lot of my French, um, which I've lost. Um <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so we went to an American school there. My parents gave us the option to go to French school or American. I chose American. And, um, yes, until fifth grade. Did then we moved your back to siblings also choose the American school? Yes, they did. But they were also tutored in French, whereas oh. I was not. I didn't want to have anything to do with the French. <laughs> oh, how interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then at fifth grade, you came back to Canada. Moved back to Canada, southwestern Ontario in Chatham. And that's where I was from from the age of 10 until 20. I was pretty much in Chatham. And okay. then I went to Franciscan University in Steubenville, okay. where I met the sisters. So did you, um, in Canada, are there very many Catholic schools or would that just not have been something you would have been able to attend? Or? Well, no, we did go to Catholic school. Um, but in Ontario, anyway, the Catholic schools are um, funded by the government. And okay. so... They're Catholic. Okay. They're not, you know, um, there's a lot in there that isn't good Catholic teaching. At least that was my experience at the time. Okay. Um, I had to fight for my faith a lot. My mm -hmm. mom um, did a great job at catechizing me. And so I knew the faith um, and I was able to, you know, speak up when things were not sounding right. Beautiful. But, yeah. And I really want to impress that um, upon you, listeners and viewers as well, because Many times you will say, we can't find a good Catholic school. If you can find a school that has a parish attached or relatively close by, and you can, um, the children can get to know the Blessed Sacrament, Christ present in the Eucharist more and more, I think that's very, very, very important. And whether or not, as Sister is mentioning, you perhaps even realize this is going to play a major role in your life as you go on, um, I hear that story many, many times. Well, I was in a Catholic school, and perhaps it wasn't as faithful as we really hoped that it would be. However, I think another thing, Sister, and probably um, this is something that certainly has occurred to you as well, 
you know the sacrifice your family is making to send you to a special school. How is it special? It's Catholic. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other aspect that I really love about what you said, and that's that's from my own growing up in the South and attending Catholic schools and um, not always as faithful as certainly Mm -hmm. um, I would wish, Um, you grow up with fighting spirit for your faith. Yes. And somewhere along the lines, everyone has to grow up to be able to, if they're going to claim their faith, be ready to fight for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably a stronghold, uh, certainly in both of us, Mm -hmm. that that you take for granted while you're in it because you just wish things were different. But you realize down the road, I know how to combat this. I know how to fight for this. I do, ultimately, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because my mom, when I was growing up, I remember... I would come home, I'd have questions, I'd be like, this is what I heard at school today, and this didn't sound quite right. And she would talk it through with me, and she taught me how to teach Beautiful. my my peers wow. and to help them through it. And um, and even on tides, dare I say, to <laughs> correct the teacher, you know, yes. and sometimes wow. I got into a sure. bit of a, you know, conflict with the teacher about it, but um, it really did. It, it taught me how to be in the world and yet not of the world. And I that's think that that's beautiful. something that I've been able to take with me throughout my life. And I think as a sister, it's really, really important to have that. So. Beautiful. And then even as sisters later on, when we get into certain school situations right. or certain um, public uh, situations mm-hmm. or even social situations where we realize things aren't exactly um, mm-hmm. according to the faith that we certainly know and love, we have a bit more ability to turn it around towards the good, the true, mm-hmm. the beautiful, mm-hmm. the, the the truth that we refer to so many times on this podcast as Dominicans. Okay, sister, so you graduated from high school and you're already really saying your family was the, the strength behind you in yeah. regards to the faith. Yes, very much so. And then um, I kind of went through a little bit of a crisis. Okay. Tell <laughs> us about um, that. Okay. My, after I graduated from high school, I wanted to go to Franciscan University, and it cost a lot of money. Yes. And um, being Canadian, obviously, in the dollar was really bad. Oh, yeah. um, so my my parents, at that point in my life, uh, ended up, my father left us. He walked out on us. And um, that was really, really difficult for me. And it really... Um, I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of anger towards God, a lot of anger towards my father. And it really impacted me in such a way that um, I ended up getting accepted to Franciscan University, and then I didn't want to go. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and, um, but it really was my saving grace. It was my lifeline because um, it was there that I was able to actually um, come to terms with my father's leaving and um, to reconcile with him and with the family. And uh, that was very... It was really important for me, and um, it helped me to really deepen in my faith. And between my first year at Franciscan and my second year, I actually served with Net Ministries as well, which also played a real pivotal role. Okay. I want to get into that in just a second. Okay. But first of all, back to the reconciliation. So yes. now here you are with this um, family crisis, mm-hmm. and the way you, as a child of this, uh, certainly um, are responding in all honesty and, um, and on a very human level. And so then you end up in a very Catholic environment of Franciscan University. How long did it take you in that kind of an environment? How long did it take you to work through? It really took going through my net ministries year okay. as well. Um, Franciscan, uh, because so many of the student body go to daily mass, yes. um, everything, you can get everything at a normal University yes. at Franciscan, yes. but the the influence to live the Catholic faith is very very strong, and so while I made a decision not to have a relationship with God, really, I still went to mass on Sundays because I um, was always afraid that I'd go to hell if I didn't. So <laughs> that was the same Catholic grace. guilt. It and, works um, sometimes. It, it does. It does okay, work. we'll it take whatever work. we That's need right. for That's the right. salvation. That's right. And then um, <laughs> one of my. Uh, friends who had lived across the hall from me in the dorm, she thought, she thought I, she, I was suited for net ministries and she had served on net. And so she encouraged me to do that, which really was out of my comfort zone and out of my personality because I was very much to, 
I, I was very quiet and, um, you know, I'm, I'm loud with people I know, but with people I don't know, I'm more, you know, reserved. And um, my mom was shocked that I wanted to do that because it was how like, beautiful. she's like, you have to speak. <laughs> I was like, I know. <laughs> you know? But um, that's where that's really where the reconciliation really, because that really fostered in us just the importance of a prayer life and being rooted in Christ, living in community, um, having to work with other people, how to reconcile um, yes. and all of that kind of thing. And that's something that just really... Now, I think probably all of you all have heard of Focus, the uh, Fellowship of Catholic University students that are on so many campuses now. And another, and it's beautiful, and another really beautiful thing Sister Martin Trez is referring to that she was on, and it's called NET, and it's out of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a strong uh, commonality between these two, but they all also have their own differences. Um, and this is the National Evangelization Team. Team. And they literally, this is what makes me laugh, but I love it. So they go as a team, mm -hmm. and you're in a specific team, mm -hmm. and you all get into a van and um, with all these different this different aspects of humanity. <laughs> men and women. And men and women. And you offer it up. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so, so. many things. I, I just love it because it stretches us out of our mm -hmm. comfort zone. And you're living with host families all throughout the year. You're, you're mendicant. On, mm -hmm. You're already learning how to beg the Dominicans. We are mendicants, so we have that aspect. And it really forces um, you to face your own humanity and to say, what bugs me in another person? And how can I get over it? Because, and how um, can I bug another person? <laughs> <laughs> because, because you have to live with this team wherever you are sent. Yes. So, Sister, tell us a few more of your experiences there, because I, I happen to love Net Ministries. and um, Yeah, you know, Net really formed me, and I, I really mean that. It laid the groundwork, I think. I mean, my parents laid the groundwork, but Net really um, taught me how to live in community. And um, my team was absolutely wonderful. We'll sh we're still in contact today, oh, and it's 20-some odd years later. Wow. Um, yeah, and I mean, it was just, we would do, every day we'd go on retreat, and we would serve anywhere from grade schools to universities to family retreats. Wow. And it was just every single day. And um, we'd be giving our testimonies and we had community prayer every day. So we'd get together for wow. an hour a day and um, it was mostly singing praise and worship okay. and um, praying. And then we'd have mass every day and go to confession regularly. But we really did live um, a poor life as well. We received Beautiful. a stipend um, mm -hmm. once a month and we had to you know, make use that happen. money, make it happen throughout that month. And it really wasn't that much. And um, we'd travel around a 15 passenger van and with a trailer. So I learned how to drive that as well, which was fun. <laughs> oh, that's and, good. Because um, I was not going to go without driving the entire year. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, I know how to drive a 15 passenger. Um, so that was good. And then um, let's see. Yeah. So it was just, it was, it really did stretch me though. Cause I do, I, it's, it's hard for me to stay in people's homes a lot. It used to be, um, because I don't I have a lot of germ issues. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, but it really did stretch me a lot. That till yeah. Now. It, yes. So, yeah. So there were some places I just, I really just didn't eat much other places, you know, it was wow. just, yeah, it was good. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So did you see the fruit of your labors? You know, not really. It was more planting the seeds. Okay planting the seeds very much because we were in and out. So we were in, we'd do a retreat for a day, for a weekend, and then we were gone. And I have never run into anyone that I ever ministered to back then. Oh, um, how in terms of, yeah. I have run into several that were on your team. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And they always ask. Well, I know my team. team. My team, I've, I mean, my team I'm in contact That's with. But beautiful. the the children and the young adults that we ministered to, I've, you know, I have no idea. That's Whatever. beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, my team, there's um, two religious on my team. So there's myself and Father Emmanuel of the CFRs. Oh, yes. And then um, and then everyone else is, you know, married or okay. doing whatever. Beautiful. So, so yeah. you did that for one year. One year. Because you could do that for two years. You could. But for me, that was enough. Sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, God. It's grueling. God you know? healed you by mm -hmm. stretching you. Exactly. That, and you gave yourself to it, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. That says a lot for you. So then you went on and finished, was it junior and senior year after that or sophomore Well, I didn't actually year? finish. Okay. Um, so I, 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 in Ontario, there's grade 13. And so oh, yes. that was considered my freshman year of okay. university. So I okay. went in as a sophomore. 
And then I went back for a year and a half and then I ran out of money. But while I was there, that's when I met all of you. Yeah, um, so tell us about how you found your vocation. <laughs> so This has many layers to it as it well. Does. So I did not want, I had no desire to be a sister, as you all well know. And um, I, you know, I wanted to get married, have lots of kids. I dated a lot. And, um, but I came across, so I'd gone to confession and I was praying before the Blessed Sacrament. On my way out of the chapel at Franciscan University, um, I went out of my way for some odd reason. Now I say it's the Holy Spirit, but at that time I was like, I don't know why I did this. There's a rack of brochures with religious communities. And this was back in 1997. So the sisters, our community was just founded. Yes, just and, founded in mm-hmm. February. And, um, and this was April. And so and I had just gotten to Michigan in April. Exactly, exactly. And so wow. there was a brochure and it said, Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. And I was like, wow, that is a beautiful title. And so I just took it, I put it in my bag, and I went to class. And later that day, um, I was living off campus, and the thought came to me that I should really write the sisters. And I mm. thought, well, that's kind of dumb. What am I going to say to a bunch of nuns, <laughs> you know, because I don't want to be one. And, um, and then the thought came back to me, you know, you should, you should really write the sisters. And again, I was like, I have no desire, you know, like, I, I, so I just kind of kept pushing it out of my head. And as the week was going on, this nagging feeling just kept coming. It was stronger and stronger and stronger. And I was like, oh, for pity's sake. So I sat down at, <laughs> at what then was a Jigungo laptop and um, just wrote, Dear Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, this is who I am. This is where I'm from. Um, I served with that ministries. I go to school at Franciscan University. I have no desire to be a sister. Uh The only reason I'm writing you is to get rid of this nagging feeling that Mm -hmm. I have. And um, if you even get this, it's only because that's the only way I can get rid of this feeling. (laughs) But I think it's great you're in the habit. And so that, and then I I mailed it because that feeling just would not go away. So I mailed it. And within a week, I received a letter from you. (laughs) And I'll never forget it because it it was a little blue envelope and, you know, perfect handwriting with a little bird on it. (laughs) And, um... (laughs) And it, and I had no idea. I mean, I knew nothing about the community at the time. And you just, you wrote, well, you know, you just might have a vocation. And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> I do not have a vocation. And um, so then at that point, that's when you and I started communicating. Yes. And then um, you had told me, I thought that you were coming out to Franciscan for the summer for class. Oh. It turned out it was Sister John Dominic. Right. So I met her. And um, then I finally got out to Michigan and... Yes. You know, kept running and running. And I have to say, sister, um, I still have your letter because it is the funniest by far of <laughs> any. Like, if you were still reading this, God bless you. But I just felt like I needed to send this to you. And I, I don't know. have a clue why, because I know I don't have a religious vocation. I'm like, repeating anybody that, repeating that. fighting it that hard, mm-hmm. God is after. So mm-hmm. I was very suspicious. Sister, tell our audience a little bit about really the first time that I came to Franciscan and you were under the tent organizing wonderful things, and I was so talking to you for I was, quite a while. Yes, I was working um, at the conferences in the summer, and I was in charge of the transportation, and it was the bishops' conference, if I remember correctly. And um, I think you were there with Mother I was. Asumpta, yes. and I smoked at the time. And um, <laughs> I saw you saw me, and you were like, "Oh, come here, come here, come here!" And so I came running over, but I had a cigarette in my hand. And I knew that was rude to smoke uh-huh. in front of you. You know, like I just didn't. I was like, "That's just not right." And but I didn't want to put my cigarette away either, mm-hmm. and there was no place to lay it. So I just kind of had it behind my back, mm-hmm. and um, and you just kept me talking. Maybe and I don't well, know, rings I, or smoke yeah. are going up behind her, and I've caught on. Yeah, and I. I had no idea. I was like, oh my gosh, she's never going to stop talking. You know, like, it was starting to burn my fingers. I finally had to let it go. I don't even remember what we were talking about at all, except... Um, I was just shooting the yeah, breeze until you had to until, drop the evidence. Yep, and I did. And I did. Yep, that's true. So yeah, so that was... So the, we knew what we were getting. Yes, yes. But I have to say, sister, um, when you made up your mind, you... Um, you really gave it everything that you could to the extent that you were capable of doing mm-hmm. at that moment. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really something that a lot of people would say, I hear this. Is there a mold? What kind of families do they come from? Religious vocations, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I just 
constantly want to say there is no mold. God is too creative to have made a mold. Mm -hmm. What a cheap way to get through creation if he had made a mold and we were all just poured into this Mm -hmm. thing. And the community cannot do that. Every individual is his or herself before God, totally created uniquely from everybody else that ever will be created, ever has been created. And that's the beauty. And as I look at our growing community and I see so many varieties of personalities and interests and talents, I'm like... God handpicks who we want it's true. exactly here. It's true. And how many, like a Sister Martin Trez would have said, I never wanted it. I never thought it could be possible. Now, Sister, years later, um, you're you're poured, pouring your energies into the apostolate of teaching yes. in a yes. wide variety of places, too. Um, so what has that meant to the maternal heart that has developed inside you? You know, it's days? really interesting. I have grown in love. And I, you know, like my patroness, St. Therese, you know, love in the heart of the church. And I just, I have never loved in this way um, where I really, I look at my students and they're mine, you know, and I, and I mean that, and I mean that sincerely, I pray for them Uh every day. I pray for them. My heart, you know, when something awful happens to them, my heart really does feel for them. And that's something that um, when I was younger, I definitely would not have. I was so focused on myself and my own hurts and my own wounds uh-huh. and that kind of thing. And now it's, it's very much more for the other, you know? Um, and it just, it, yeah, it's, I love, I love teaching. I love being in the classroom. Um, and you're good at it. I, well, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I do. I do enjoy it. I mean, if I, if I am, that's great. Um, and you're high school. I am high school. Yes. Mm-hmm. So your yes. degree is in. I have, okay. So I have a bachelor's of science in education. Um, Social studies, history, structures of the discipline, science, and then I've got, um, what do you call those, an endorsement for high school as well. Excellent. Okay. And then, so I'm, I'm qualified to teach K through 12. Wonderful. And then I also have my master's degree through Catholic Studies program in St. Paul, Minnesota. Tell us a little bit about that program. It's a wonderful program. Mm-hmm. It's, um, mm-hmm. So basically, it's, it's, it's all-encompassing. So it's got the arts, theology, philosophy. And um, it just gives you a really good um, overview and good foundation in our faith and to be able to teach that to others in a way that is attainable for them as well. That they can that really... increase your zeal? Yes. Oh, very much so. Uh, very much so. Yeah. Very much so, yes. And it's close to what seminary? Uh, St. Paul Minis- or St. School of Divinity, I think it's called the St. Okay, Paul School so. of Divinity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's on the campus of St. Thomas. Which, again, is, is a great place. Oh, yeah. So it's wonderful. It's there wonderful. are so many of these initiatives going on in the church, mm-hmm. in the United States, and I'm sure around the world as well. And our community is blessed to be able to plug into more and more of the really good ones and to support mm-hmm. them because we need to know our faith and That's not true. just know it up here, but be on fire here. Mm-hmm. And sister, I uh, really thank you for coming today and Thanks for, for having me. being a part of all this because your heart sure shows that you you love it. Hook, line, and sinker. I do. And you so desire. I can't believe I waited so long. And your story is unique in so many in all the world. different ways, <laughs> as is everyone's. But I knew that yours would be a lot of yeah, fun yeah. and that we would end up laughing a lot. So thanks for the laugh. Thanks, sister. And the beauty behind it. So thank you all and stay tuned for more episodes of The Truth Shall Set You Free. God bless. So if you like the material on this particular podcast, then please click on the next podcast for another fascinating story.